Hello everyone, this is Chris from bewegendearchitektur.com today with another tutorial in architectural modeling in Blender. Uh, be aware that this is going to be the last tutorial in Blender 2.79. Uh, yesterday a new version of Blender was released and the next tutorials are going to be in Blender 2.8. Let's get started. Um, first of all, I'm going to activate um, the screen cost so you can follow my steps maybe a little bit easier. We're starting out with the standard scene. We're going to delete cube and lamp. We are adding a plane. We're scaling this plane up four times. And in the edit mode, we're going to subdivide this plane several times in order to get a higher resolution mesh like this. Okay, then the next step is going to transform this plane into a, a artificial landscape, let's call it like this. And we want to do this with the proportional editing tool. This is a really nice tool. Check this out. You can activate it by clicking here or by pressing the shortcut O. But let me explain what is happening here. So I'm going to deactivate it, uh, select a vertice. I'm going to press G in order to move it. And as you can see, only the selected vertice is going to move. Uh, but when I'm pressing the O button in order to activate proportional editing, I'm going to press G again, then magic is happening because now not only uh, the selected vertices is going to move, but also uh, the next uh, uh, the the neighborhood is is going to follow. Um, when I'm turning the mouse wheel, we are able to increase or decrease the influence of this tool. And this is really handy if you want to manipulate a high amount of vertices in a mesh. Uh, you can use it with uh, every uh, transformation. So for example, rotate or move, uh, sorry, G for move or S for scaling. And um, what we want to do is we are going to select three vertices we're going to press G set in order to move them in the set direction uh, in order to get uh, a simple uh, artificial landscape like this. Okay, uh, in the next step, we're going to the modifier tab and we're switching uh, to wireframe modifier in order to create this simple beam structure. Uh, so this is a really handy tool for uh, creating uh, simple beam structures in, in architectural modeling, but maybe we can do much more. First of all, uh, we could assume that we do have a structural analysis of uh, this plane and uh, we could assume that some parts come along with uh, thinner beams and some areas in which there are more stresses will need uh, thicker beams. So what could we do uh, in order to somehow fine tune the structure to a given uh, structural analysis? We want to check out the weight pane tool because this is exactly uh, uh, how we could achieve this. The weight pane tool will allow us to specify a radius, to specify a weight, and to draw on the structure. So I'm just clicking three times or maybe four times in order to create these uh, fancy looking uh, gradients from blue to red. And um, simply imagine this blue is zero and red is 100%. And what was happening here in the background is that we have created a vertex group. So with the first click, we have created a new group um, that is representing uh, weights from zero to 100%. And if you go back to the modifiers tab, if we're switching to the object mode, then we can select this vertex group in this field here. And then you can see that uh, the parts that we have drawn red uh, are 100% thick. 
thickness and the parts that have been blue are 0% thickness. The factor will allow us that uh, we specify somehow that 0 is not 0 but for example 20%. So we do not want to have a beam that is completely zero. This would not make sense. Um, also a handy function we can click here to reverse this effect. Um, so this is simply flipping the weights. And um, this is a really handy uh, setup in order to, to fine-tune architectural structures in an easy and uh, sketchy way. Okay, uh, but uh, after all, this is not looking too fancy right now. What could we do more to create... Uh, uh, even more impressive structures and um, we could do a hack of an existing uh, tool so this is going uh, to uh, as it is a little trick I'm going to show you and it is about the decimate modifier the decimate modifier usually is uh, applied to um, objects with an extremely high amount of vertices in order to reduce uh, the, uh, the the amount of vertices. For example, if you want to make a computer game or if you are rendering a movie, uh, this is a handy tool to simply reduce the amount of vertices in order to make the whole scene uh, smaller or the object smaller. So we're going to move this on top of the wireframe modifier and let's check out what is happening. So let's stick to collapse and we are going to decrease the ratio and weird stuff is is uh, going on right now because uh, all the parts um, with um, high curvature are staying the same and the parts in which the curvature is low uh, or merely zero the beams are going to be deleted and in this way you can create in my opinion really cool uh, architectural structures that do not uh, have a structural log logic but uh, uh, an aesthetical logic because in areas in which you would need more parts in order to define a structure you will have more and the parts uh, which do not need so much um, elements in order to define a smooth uh, looking shape uh, are going to left out so this has some kind of logic yeah at least in my opinion uh, maybe you have seen that there is sometimes on uh, here wait I'm searching for here you can see that an uh, uh, error occurs. Uh, this is happening because we have checked even thickness. If we disable this function, then maybe you have increased the thickness a little bit again, uh, but then this uh, error won't uh, occur. So uh, this is step one. We can also check out planar. This is another algorithm uh, which allows us to uh, decrease uh, the amount of vertices by specifying an angle. So this is another uh, a cool effect we could achieve with the same uh, hack, let's call it like this. And um, that's it for today. I'm going to render this with my default settings. You can check them out, uh, check them out in our first tutorial, uh, how to create digital ornaments. Please post your results in the comments. Please like and share. And hopefully uh, we're going to see you next time at bewegendearchitektur.com. Ciao.